Hi everybody, I'm the SolidWorks Nerd, and today I'm excited to unbox and set up my new 3D printer from Mark Forge. But before we get there, let's see which one we've got. This is the Mark Forge Onyx Pro, the second out of six available in Mark Forge's composite series. Its call to fame is the fact that it can print with two materials simultaneously, interweaving them to achieve rigidity and strength. And it's this strength that makes it unlike any other printer in the market. This particular model can print out in nylon, Mark Forge's Onyx, we'll talk about that later, and fiberglass. Other than that, it sports a build volume of 320mm by 132mm deep by 152mm tall, or 129 by 52 by 6 inches in America units. Certainly those stats are nothing to write home about, so why does this printer cost $7,000? Well, part of that answer has to do with the materials. You see, Mark Forge is a materials company as well as a 3D printing company. And not only has it developed some pretty awesome materials, but it's also engineered some pretty clever ways to get them into 3D printed parts. Let's talk about nylon. Nylon is a thermoplastic that has a lot to bring to the table in terms of 3D printing. It is very chemically inert, which means it could come into contact with a large variety of solvents and not melt away like ABS would. Parts made from it are essentially weatherproof. Enter Onyx. This material is basically what you get when you mix chopped bits of carbon fiber with nylon. When you do this, you get many great benefits. The plastic is much more dimensionally stable, as well as less prone to warping. Parts made from it take on this deep black color with very beautiful surface finish. And best of all, it enhances the material properties when compared to just regular nylon. Tensile modulus increases by 50%, Tensile stress at yield increases by 16%, and flexural strength increases by 150%. You get all of this with just a minimal increase in density, about 10%. In layman's terms, increased resistance to bending and stretching. But now, let's talk about fiberglass filament, to me, the point of owning a machine like this. This fine strand of fiberglass is what transforms regular 3D printed parts into something truly functional. Fiberglass has a tensile strength of about 590 megapascals, higher than a lot of aluminum alloys and on par with some steels. The printer has the ability to embed these strands in the 3D printed parts to make them incredibly strong and resistant to bending. As far as my research goes, there's really no other printer that can do this, especially at this price point. Now, I'm sure you didn't click on this video just to hear me talk about the printer, so let's get to the unboxing. Ordering a desktop series printer from Mark Forge will yield a shipment of two boxes, one being much larger than the other. I think it's pretty clear which one contains a printer, but just to build up suspense, let's start with a small box. So not many outside tools are required to set up this printer. Just a box cutter and cable cutters will do. I have gloves just to not get fingerprints all over the place, and an ethernet cable, because that is my connectivity of choice. Alright, let's go ahead and get this box open. All right, in this box, we find an airtight Pelican case to hold the material. You see, as cool as Onyx is, it's moisture sensitive, so it needs to live in this box at all times. All right, opening up the case itself reveals a bit of styrofoam. A spool to hold my material. See it magnetically clasps like that. They set to the side. And we have the spool of Onyx itself. It's super important that we not open this up until we're ready to load it. And considering that the printer is still in the box, I'll leave this to the side for now. If you want to have a look inside, just a, a retainer for the uh, spool of material and there is the hole that it comes out of and now to the main event there should be a little bit of space between the top of the box and the printer but just to be sure I'm just gonna set my box cutter to be pretty short Okay, so the first thing we see here is the power cord. So I'll go ahead and set that to the side. And uh, 
safety instructions. I'm sure that's important. So to the side it goes. All right, let's get this thing of styrofoam off. Wow, it acted real well. Put that to the side. And that's the top of our printer right there. Before I work on extracting the printer from the box, let's talk about the space that's gonna go on. Not much needs to happen and it doesn't have to be the most level surface ever. However, you need to consider that it's not only accommodating the space for the printer itself, but the dry box needs to be right next to it as well. So that's a little bit larger. When I measure the minimum footprint, I will put the results right here on the screen. Also to consider is that the printer has a visor and aluminum lid that needs to lift up. So it has a minimum vertical clearance as well. When I measure that, I'll put that result here on the screen. Now with that out of the way, we can release this printer from its styrofoam prison. Now its sleek design means that there's not very many hard edges to uh, grab it by and lift it, but I have a trick up my sleeve for that. So I'll go ahead and actually let's rip open this film here like this. And go ahead and remove these pieces of masking tape that's holding the lid shut here. Now with the lid able to be opened, um, there is these two parts right here, the opposite rails. And these are pretty sturdy, so I'm actually going to grab the rails from underneath here and lift straight up. So that's the plan at least. Zooming in just a bit, you'll notice that the place that I plan to grab it by is underneath here. And the same thing on the opposite side. That wasn't so bad. So directly in the front of the printer is the information for registering your printer. So best keep that in a safe place. So as you can see, the visor of this printer is covered with a protective film. Perfect for ASMR. So without further ado, I'll shut up now, turn down the music and let you guys enjoy this. Now, wasn't that relaxing? So, with that out of the way, we can see that we have yet another box in the uh, build area. Go ahead and remove it. Put it right here. So, taking a look around, we can see that there is another plastic film. Okay, I'm done with that, I promise. But in all seriousness, looking around here, I can see that all the parts have very beautiful fit and finish. Opening and closing this lid, as well as moving the visor around, is very satisfying and tells me about the very high build quality of this machine. 
There is almost no plastic around to speak of and the machine looks gorgeous. Clearly, Mark Forge went out of its way to make sure that the user experience is premium with this machine beyond just using it as a printer. Let's take more of a tour around. So looking into the open lid, we see most of the mechanics that make up the printer. So there's a couple of thick zip ties here that is holding this print bed to the gantry. So let's take these cable cutters and take care of them. That's one. And that's two. Get those out of here. And there you go. Yeah. Print, print stage is free to move. So it'll be a little stiff at first. So back here is where the material gets fed in. It comes in through here, just like this. Goes right into the extruder, which pushes it into this plastic tube all the way here and, and uh, gets forced out of the print head here. So fiber is a similar story, except that it will start at the back wall of this printer, go up a tube that's in that corner, I'm gonna go to this thinner tube, go through the fiber extruder, and then through its very own tube to get to the print head. Additionally, we can see the stepper motors that control the XY motion of the printer, and it all looks very good. Again, the fit is phenomenal on these parts. Looking underneath the print head, we can see the two nozzles. This smaller orangish one here is the plastic nozzle, and the large flat yellowish one is the fiber nozzle. If you mix them up, just remember that the fiber needs to be ironed down into the part, so this large flat design helps for doing that. So turning our attention to the back, we have more features to talk about. As you can see, the machine ID is reproduced on the back of the machine, but I've covered it up since it's for my eyes only. But now let's talk about the ports. Over here, we have a three-pronged power port and a power switch right next to it. The use is pretty self-explanatory, so we'll turn our attention to this USB Type B port. This is to access the printer's internal storage for printing offline. I don't plan on using it very much, so let's actually take a look at the Ethernet port that's right next to it. So this is the primary mode of communication with the MarkForge printer, or at least that's what I want it to be anyway. Um, Ethernet's not only faster than Wi-Fi, but it's also a lot more reliable most of the time. Next to that, we have a USB Type A female, and this is for inserting flash drives to initiate prints as yet another alternative to print offline. And lastly, we have uh, the port for the Wi-Fi antenna. I don't plan on using it, so when I get the antenna out, I'm probably just gonna leave it unassembled. And up here, this little hole with a grommet on it is where the material feeds into, so it can get to the extruder. Other than that, we have a vent down there, and that's pretty much it. Before I get this powered on, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the accessory box first, just in case I need something from there. So, let's get this off. bubble wrap. Okay, and here we have the spool of fiberglass. So I'll get that set up later, but let's put it here for right now. Uh, what else? All right, a little bit, little accessory kit. We'll see what's in there in a moment. All right, so here is the build plate. You got a little sticker here advising that you should apply a layer of glue between every frame, which is fine. Get this opened up. So this is what Mark Forge calls its true bed. You know, it's supposed to be pretty flat. 
Yep, that looks pretty flat. So uh, I'll just set that to the side. And let me do that on the bubble wrap. Oh yeah, and uh, I guess I should flip it over. So there are the three points for the kinematic coupling, which I'll show you in a little bit. And they provide you with a scraper, of course. So the thing about this scraper is that uh, the corners are very, very sharp. So I'm probably going to take a file to this and round off these corners a little bit so I don't scratch my print bed when uh, using it on the bed. So other than that, that's all in the box. So now let's check out the accessory kit. This guy opened up. All right, first thing is plastic and fiber shims in this envelope. So this is what we're gonna to use to level the bed. And something that's pretty nice, let me see if I can get the, the other set out of here. Yeah, something pretty nice that they do is that they give you a lot of extra consumables. So they give you three fiber nozzles and three plastic nozzles. So at least they've hooked, hooked us up here for a while. Put that right there. They've also included um, not just any wrench, but this is actually a torque wrench. So you don't over torque the nozzles and break your print heads. So that's pretty thoughtful of them. 12.4 inch pounds. And of course they include the adapter so you can actually take out the nozzles. So here's just a USB extension cord. So if you find yourself using that USB-A port on the back, you can use this to bring it to the front and make it more convenient. Also pretty thoughtful of them. So here's a USB-A to B. So this is to access the internal storage. I probably won't be using that a lot, but I'll keep it in a safe place. All right, so here's the tube that connects the dry box to the printer and gives the moisture sensitive material a path straight into the print head. Okay, so in here, they've included an Allen key, a couple of plastic tubes, and this little red dry box plug. So if you ever take your printer on the go and you need to seal up that dry box, you use this plug. Oh, there's lots of goodies in here. Tweezers for pinching things. Brass brush for cleaning, cleaning off the nozzles if they get gunked up. Just a regular stick of Elmer's glue. So that's all it takes to adhere Mark Forge prints to the bed, which is pretty nice. Um, I feel like they could have done something like very proprietary, but it's just school glue. Here's that Wi-Fi antenna that I was talking about. I'll just probably leave it in the box. And lastly, a small tube of anti-seize. So you put this on the threads of the nozzle so they don't bind to the print head. And now let's go ahead and collect all of these together so they look really nice. And so, here's all the stuff that my printer came with all laid out for you to see. Hey guys, Future Nerd here. So, I didn't realize how much footage I got and how action-packed this video is. So, I'm gonna have to make this a two-parter. So, I will catch you next week where I'll set up the printer to actually make some prints. See you next week.